It's Ben from Digital Mastery, and here we're going to take a look at why do you end up with noisy skies and why it's not usually your camera's fault, it's other things. And part of it has to do with the default settings that are found in both Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. They tend to produce noisy skies. So let's dive in and see why. So here I have an image. Uh, if I look at this one in the upper right, it shows me it was shot at ISO 125. Usually the higher the ISO setting, the more likely it is to have noise. And so this is low, that therefore it shouldn't produce much noise. But we have all this noise in the sky. So let's figure out why. First, I'm gonna click to zoom out so you can see the entirety of the image. And it has to do with the histogram up here. The histogram tells you the brightness levels that are found in the picture. And if you're not used to it by chance, black is represented on the left, white is represented on the right, and then all the shades in between. In here it shows me that this general brightness range that is a bit darker than white is where most of the stuff is in this image. Well, I'm gonna hit the reset button in the lower right, and that's gonna show you what it looked like when this came out of the camera, whereas this is my final result. So when I hit reset, watch the histogram. Do you see this huge gap on the right side of the histogram? Remember, white is represented on the far right, and that means there is nothing near white. And the lightest shade we have in the image, it's darker than 25% gray, it's darn near right in the middle. And that's why this sky has a good amount of noise, and that has to do with the exposure. That means it has to do with the photographer. And so anytime you're shooting, if you're on a mirrorless camera, in the menu system for your camera, usually there's an info button, and if you hit that a few times, you can get a histogram to appear on the viewfinder. If you have a DSLR, uh, camera that has a mirror in it, then you can't usually get it in your viewfinder. Instead, you review the picture after you took it. Um, although you can get it if you use live view where you use the screen on the back. But anytime you see something that looks like this, where you see a huge gap on the right side of the histogram, uh, unless you're shooting a really dark scene, uh, you're underexposing. And that's gonna cause noise to appear in your image. And the reason for that is areas that are brightly lit up here, there's a really big strong signal that the camera can capture and it usually has little or no noise. But then as you get into darker and darker areas of the scene, then that's where the camera struggles because it's getting very little light coming in to measure. And right behind the sensor, there's a bunch of electronics that produces a bit of interference. And that interference uh, is going to become prominent when the signal doesn't have very much information. And what that means is just when there's very little light being measured. Then a tiny little hint of variation coming from interference of the electronics suddenly gets into the image in a noticeable way and you don't see it in your picture necessarily to begin with, that's because the area is so dark, you can't see any of the detail. But if we look at this image and you look at, for instance, this area here, if you were to just glance at that, the only detail I can see is one little line coming around here. I can't tell if this panel here is made out of wood or if it's made out of this green uh, painted uh, material. But if I choose undo and go to the end result, now I can easily see it's made out of wood. But the other thing I'm gonna be able to easily see is the noise that would be in that area. And it's not that brightening this made the noise come to be, it was in the image. We just made it easy to see and it used to be difficult to see, just like over here, it's difficult to see wood grain or anything else, so it's gonna be difficult to see the noise that's in there. So this area down here is probably gonna be some of the noisiest information, fine if you leave it dark. But it's when you brighten up your images to compensate for not using a proper exposure in your camera that you're gonna end up with noise. But that's not all. The default settings here in Lightroom and also in Adobe Camera Raw, they're not helping you. With default settings, Lightroom is gonna sharpen the entirety of your image. And it's gonna look at even the finest variation in your picture and it's gonna exaggerate it. Therefore, if there's a tiny hint of noise that would generally not even be perceivable, it's the sharpening that's kicking in that is boosting that up and making it so it's more prominent. It's adding more contrast to an area that otherwise wouldn't have it. 
And so let's take a look at how we can change our noise reduction settings because the default settings, they produce noisy skies. So I'm gonna click on the sky in this case and I can easily see the noise that's there. So now let's figure out what we can do. On the right side in Lightroom, we have a section called detail. Same section is in Adobe Camera Raw and it looks identical and works identically. If you look here for sharpening, the amount is not set to zero, and this is default settings for this section. Instead, it's sharpening your image. Every single image you've ever imported into Lightroom that is a RAW file gets sharpened. Uh, and if you come down here, there's a setting called masking. Notice that it sets as zero. What masking does is when it's set to zero, it means sharpen everything, that you don't care how little tiny of a difference there is, just go ahead and sharpen it. But as you bring the masking slider higher and higher, it's telling Lightroom to ignore areas that have just very, the tiniest uh, variation in brightness. And it's looking for areas where there's a bigger jump in brightness, like the edge of a white horse touching a blue sky, where there's such an obvious edge that you can't ignore it. Well, sure, exaggerate that. But if you get the masking high enough, you can get it to ignore the little bitty variation that is noise. So here's how to do it. Well, you could just bring up the masking slider and if you got it up high enough, watch the sky, I'll bring it way up and you can see that a lot of the noise is, is no longer so bad. I'll bring it back down to show you what it looked like before. But I wanna get it to just the right setting where I get it to not sharpen this smooth part of the sky, but it does sharpen the rest of the image. So I'm gonna click on my picture to zoom out. And when I come here to the masking slider, I'm gonna hold on the option key, Alt and Windows. I have it held on right now. And then I'm gonna click masking and I'm gonna keep that option key held down. Now it's showing me the mask that's being used and in a mask, any area that's white means that it's where something's going to apply. In this case, noise reduction. Then if I start to bring this up higher, any area that becomes black will not be sharpened because in a mask, black means hide. Whatever it is, is being applied. So in this case, we would still get some sharpening in our sky. Now, before I pull it up too far, let's just look at our sky and say, where is the really detail? Well, right here, there's no detail whatsoever. If you were to zoom up as much as you want in that sky in real life, you wouldn't suddenly see like the texture of burlap or something else that would be true detail. It would just be smooth. It's only where we have these little clouds coming in, those wisps of clouds, and there's some difference in them. Like right in here, I can see a slightly darker area. We could sharpen that if we wanted that area to become more prominent. But it sky's not going to look bad uh, even with that. So I'm going to come in here and hold down my option key. I'm going to click on masking. And I see that those areas that I just pointed out still have white around them, meaning that those edges in the clouds would still get sharpened. So well, I'm going to continue to raise my masking until the majority of the sky turns black. Right about there, I'd say is pretty good because now the areas of the sky that had no noticeable detail in real life are not being sharpened. But I still have some white or gray on those parts of the clouds that did have a hint of detail, so they can be exaggerated. Or if it's really noisy sky, I might bring it up even higher to something more like that, because the detail that was in the clouds was not really important detail that needed to be enhanced. So I'm gonna find what I like for my setting on this particular image. And I would say that it is right about there, right around 30 for this picture. And then I let go. Now, if I click on the sky to zoom up and we take a look, there's still some noise here. And that's because I underexposed this image and I brightened it up in Photoshop. So some of that noise is from your camera, but it's really my fault, not the camera's fault. Um, but if I go to my masking slider, I'm gonna put my mouse right on it and I'm gonna double click without moving my mouse. Double clicking on a slider will reset it to its default settings. So therefore we can see what the default settings did. That's why the sky looked so noisy. It said that's default settings. And then I'll click one more time and it'll bring it back to where the masking slider was before. And there you can see it's much less pronounced. Now, down here, you have noise reduction. And so if you underexposed your image and then brightened it up in Photoshop, you might need to head down here and bring this up a little bit. 
Now, I'm not gonna get into this all that much because we're talking primarily about skies here. Just know that the higher this gets, the softer your image as a whole is going to be, and therefore the, the main detail within your picture. So what I'm gonna do instead is zoom out here. I'm gonna come up here to the masking icon. This icon changed recently uh, when they introduced a new version of Lightroom. And oh, by the way, you can see I already have a bunch of masks here. Well, if you want me to show you how this image got transformed from in-camera capture to final result, just let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to do a lesson that shows you how I take a lot of images from the original capture to that end result. Uh, also, if you hit the like button, that helps both me and me <laughs> in that it encourages me to make more videos because I know people are actually paying attention and appreciating it, but it also helps YouTube uh, to serve more people up to my video, which again, encourages me to make more. So anyway, uh, let's come in here now and do a little bit more on the sky. I've clicked on the masking icon and it'll look this way only if you've updated Lightroom to the newest version. It's the same icon as in Adobe Camera Raw. And then I'm gonna click right here to create a new mask. And one of the choices we now have is select sky. So I'm gonna choose that. And then sometimes I get a little fancy because when you choose select sky, it will usually get some of this green, at least mine is set to green. You can change the color down here. I have show overlay turned on, which is causing it to show me what it's isolated. Uh, but sometimes it ends up selecting more than what's needed. So oftentimes I click here on the, the word subtract and then I tell it to subtract the subject from that. And by doing so, it's going to clean up what I had. If you noticed, there was a lot, there's a lot less over here on the horse's head, but it depends on the picture. Sometimes that's perfect. In this particular case, it's not. You can see where this green got removed from too many areas on the image. It's just too complex of a shape for it to deal with. So I'm gonna type Command Z, Control Z in Windows, and on this particular image, I'm not gonna do this. And you just gotta test it. And if it doesn't look like it did a good result, choose undo. But oftentimes that makes it a much better selection of purely the sky. All right, well now that we have that uh, mask created of our sky, down here we have our settings for it. And what I wanna do is slide down here to this choice called noise. And this isn't gonna add noise. This should be called noise reduction. It's just they didn't have horizontal space. Now that mask with default settings, I think is going to um, disappear the moment that I move up the noise slider. And that's the only reason I'm gonna bump it up uh, right now. Otherwise I would want it to disappear before I zoomed up. But now that I've zoomed up, I can see my sky and all I need to do is bring this slider up higher and higher until the sky becomes smooth. You just gotta be careful you don't make it so smooth that uh, it just doesn't fit in with the rest of the image because the rest of the image is still gonna have some noise. But there you have it. The main thing is that if you underexpose your images, you are causing your images to be noisy. That noise is usually only in the really dark areas. So it's fine. It's only if you're gonna go over here into Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw and say, oh, I wanna compensate for the settings that I used in my camera and I'm gonna brighten up this image. Well, now that noise, which was really hard to see because it was in really dark things, is going to become easy to see and you're gonna to need to deal with it. And regardless, if you underexposed or not, I find the sharpening in Lightroom and Camera Raw to be too aggressive. It's like it sharpens absolutely everything and I would rather go in and adjust the masking slider to say don't sharpen something that has no detail in it because if it's something that had no detail, it's perfectly smooth, no texture within it or anything, um, then sharpening is only gonna exaggerate the noise. And so on just about every image, I end up bringing up that masking slider and I hold down the option key, Alt and Windows when I do it. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button and also visit mastersacademy.com. That's where you're gonna find about 250 hours of me teaching Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography. But I'll see you next time.